Hey, this is Ryan. I'm the head of the Proxy Network support team here with a video tutorial, this time to go through the steps to use the Proxy Deployment Tool. Proxy Deployment Tool lets us do a couple things here. Uh, design a custom installation package for the proxy host, you know, containing whatever kind of client-side settings you want, like the license key, gateway connectivity information, stuff like that. So first thing we do is we'll right-click Installation Files, go to New, Installation File, and then tell the software what files we're working with. So we're importing the host.msi for 32-bit machines and the host-x64 for 64-bit machines. Once we've imported the files here, we'll expand product configurations if you haven't already, and then right-click host, go to new configuration. And we'll give it an arbitrary name here. And then when we do that, the right pane populates with all of the available proxy host side settings. So first thing we'll probably do here is fill in the license key. Double-click the line that says license, and use this value, and you can copy and paste your license key into here. And if you don't have a license key just yet or are evaluating, you can just leave this blank for now. And the host will be fully functional for up to 30 days. Uh, number two, so we'll configure the proxy host to report into your proxy gateway. Double-click the line that says gateways, click on add, and then we'll punch in the address of the server. Now this can be the straight-up IP address of the server, a DNS alias for the server, or just the server name. Let's just assume I've got a gateway behind 192.168.1.1 here, and I'll click OK and click apply. So the proxy host will communicate to that server at that IP address there. Now if you have machines like laptops that'll be you know reporting in from in and outside your network you would also plug in the public IP here. So in addition to the LAN IP you'd want laptops reporting to your server twice once on the public IP whatever that might be. And best practices here would really to be to ultimately to create a DNS alias that resolves to the server both internally and externally so that way it's one station specifier for all you know wherever you happen to be it'll resolve to the server so after we've given up license and given it the gateway the other point of interest would be the station name here the station name controls how the hosts will appear to you in your proxy web console or proxy master so the default behavior is that the machines will appear to you in the, in the fashion of their NetBIOS computer name but we have, we have the ability to make them show up to you in the fashion of the logged in user and the computer in the same field here. So if I do percent username percent on percent name percent, this will cause the host machines to appear to me in the fashion of J Smith on computer name. And these will dynamically resolve to whatever the actual username is who's logged into Windows on that host machine. And percent name percent will dynamically resolve to whatever the actual NetBIOS computer name is. Let me click apply, okay. And at this point we've established critical mass here. This is probably the, the minimum amount of host side settings here that we'll want to have our host configured with. Optionally, you can configure permission to connect settings up here. If I double click connection permission, I can set the host to allow connectivity only if the end user has granted me the ability to connect. So if you want the end, end user to approve the connection, set connection permissions to grant. Click OK, and then we set the grant permission time so that we have, you know, maybe a 10 or 30 second window of how long it has till you get automatically rejected. You know, if the end user doesn't respond, you'll get rejected here. So let's click OK. And let's pretend we're done here. So once we're done, what we want to do is turn our configuration template that only proxy understands into a transform file that Windows will understand. So I'll right click host config, go to new transform. And then the key here is to make sure that we generate two transforms, one for the host.msi for 32-bit machines, and a second one for the 64-bit machines. So right now, we're going to make one for the 32-bit MSI. I'll call it host32 because I want 32 in the name. Click OK. And then I'll repeat the same process again, this time for the 64-bit machines. Create new transform. Pick the 64-bit installer from the dropdown and then give it a name with 64 in it so you know that this goes along with the 64-bit host installer. Click OK. It'll give it the MST extension. And we're done. At this point, we have created our transform files that we can use to install the host and have our settings applied right at install time. Okay, so now that we've made our transform files that, can, that will contain and apply our desired proxy host settings, how do we actually deploy the host? Here we go. So first thing we'll want to do in the left pane is find Active Directory Domains. The first time you use the tool, you'll, you might want to right click and refresh so it'll find your 
domains here. And then once it finds it, you might need to re right click to refresh to uh, have it retrieve your organizational units and computers. So one, once it finds your AD structure here, navigate to where you'd like to na navigate to where your machines are. And to deploy to a single machine, we'll right click, go to install software, and then pick the installation file from the drop down here. It's either going to be host.msi for 32 bit machines or host 64 for 64 bit machines. Next, pick the transform file that will apply the settings. And I'll pick the 64 bit transform to go along with the 64 bit install. And then lastly, we'll click do not restart after install because the machines will otherwise reboot on their own. Click OK, and that will trigger the deployment tool to go send the proxy host out to that machine and suppress the reboot. From here, the machine will just need a reboot, and then you can expect to begin seeing machines in your proxy master or proxy web console. Now, to deploy to multiple machines, what we'll do is we'll highlight the top level of the OU, and then in the right pane shows us all of the machines. So from here, I can do a right click, to select all, right click the selected machines, do an install software, and this is the process for an install to many machines. This has been another video short with Ryan from Proxy Network Support. Thank you for watching.